Hey guys, it's your favorite reliability and test guy here with another fun-filled, action-packed video on reliability tests and validation topics. Today's video is on MIL standard A10H method 514.8 Annex C transportation vibration environments. If you would like to learn more about vibration testing, check out my book from Barnes & Noble in the link below. All right, let's get started. Annex C covers tailoring for vibration exposure during transportation. Whether you're a test technician, a test engineer, or a quality manager, understanding this method is critical for ensuring that you design and package for robustness in order to protect your system during transportational loads. In this video, we will cover Annex C overview, transportation simulation, test item configurations, package and variations, isolation techniques, equipment orientation, test categories and levels, documentation and integrity, practitioner tips, and benefits of Annex C. Let's go ahead and cover an overview now, starting with the purpose. Annex C provides detailed guidance on transportation-related vibration environments. It aids engineers and test professionals in accurately defining vibration exposure levels and durations relevant to an item's entire life cycle. Its intended application is that it is utilized primarily for developing realistic vibration tests that simulate real-world conditions. These conditions are crucial for ensuring that equipment reliably operates and survives throughout transportation-related stress. The importance is that it ensures realistic simulation, preventing over- and under-testing, thus saving money and ensuring reliability. In terms of preferred method, Actual measurement of environmental vibrations and life cycle durations provides the most accurate basis for defining test profiles. The use of database and defaults. When actual measurement data is unavailable, utilize existing databases or default exposure levels defined within Annex C as preliminary references. And planning tool. Preliminary life cycle definitions help prioritize significant vibration exposures, optimizing limited resources for critical vibration tests. Limitations include generalization risk. Default scenarios outlined may not fully represent the actual operational environments, so use the levels outlined and testing scenarios outlined in Annex C as a guideline and not a set-in-stone play-by-play playbook to execute. Measurements and recommendation. Actual field measurements are highly recommended to refine default profiles, ensuring the test rigorously reflects the true environment. So we're gonna go through some test levels and test profile examples here, but I highly recommend using field data to develop a custom tailored test profile for your specific system or product. Transportation vibration testing includes multiple phases, including truck, trailer, aircraft, ship, rail, and so forth, which all have distinct vibration characteristics. Correctly configure and test items according to realistic transportation conditions significantly impacts the test outcomes and the equipment durability. Key factors for transportation simulation include test item configuration, Include a realistic packaging, which allows for accurate simulation. Always test items in the actual transportation configuration using the exact packaging method that ensures realistic vibration response. Avoid simulated items, including dummy loads or simulations may not replicate critical parameters such as resonant frequencies, stiffnesses, dampen, or internal mass distribution. Documentation is important. It maintains detailed records of exact configurations tested, including the internal securing methods, external packaging materials, and mountain specifics. The next is packaging variations, including transportation phase adjustments. In regards to phase-specific configurations, packaging often changes during transportation phases. For instance, isolators or cushioning designed for shock reduction during loading might be temporarily bypassed during actual transportation to improve stability. Block and embracing techniques. Internal items, sensitive components, and flexible structures should be securely blocked or braced. Temporary blocking prevents unnecessary motion and internal collisions during transit. 
Record package and changes. Document each package and variation meticulously, describing clearly when and why changes occur to ensure reproducibility and clarity. The next is shock and vibration isolation. Critical factors include resonant frequency considerations. Package and in isolation systems must avoid resonant frequencies close to vibration frequencies commonly experienced during transport. Resonance leads to amplified motion, increase in potential for damage. Minimum suspension frequency. Packaging should maintain a minimum suspension frequency of at least twice any significant vibration frequency spike. For transport via aircraft, a minimum frequency of 20 Hz is specified due to the unique vibration spectrum. Soft blocking and internal isolation. Internal components or assemblies should be softly isolated yet firmly secured. Soft blocking materials such as foam, elastomers, and springs should control motion without introducing harmful resonance. Next, let's look at equipment orientation during testing, such as with orientation influence. The first is fixed orientation testing. When the orientation of equipment relative to the transport vehicle is known, for example, vertically mounted, longitudinally aligned, tests should reflect these exact orientations for accurate measurements. Variable or unknown orientations. When orientation isn't precisely defined or can change, testing must use an enveloped vibration profile combining potential vibration orientations such as vertical, transverse, and longitudinal. This conservative approach ensures equipment survival irrespective of orientation during transport. Orientation documentation. Clearly document orientations tested, along with justifications to ensure clarity and repeatability and future reproducibility. Recommendations include prioritize actual measurements. Actual environmental measurements are always preferred over default test profiles. Team collaboration. Cross-functional collaboration across engineering, reliability, and testing teams is essential for comprehensive assessment. And continuous improvement. Regularly refine testing based on real-world data to optimize testing effectiveness and efficiency. Let's go ahead and break down typical transportation environments, including truck transportation over U.S. highways, mission and field transport scenarios, aircraft environments, jet, propeller, aircraft, and helicopters, rail transportation, and why understanding these conditions matter. Let's go ahead and review the test levels provided in the tables from Annex C and practical steps for correctly setting up your vibration test. The first one we'll look at is Category 4 Truck and Trailer Secured Cargo. The first is truck transportation on U.S. highways. Characteristics include that it is dominated by broadband vibration from interactions between road surfaces and vehicle suspensions. The recommended exposure duration is a test time for 60 minutes per axis per every 1,609 kilometers or 1,000 miles. Test levels are typically enveloped, which include a vertical test profile of 1.17 G's RMS a peak velocity of 9.69 inches per second, and a displacement of 0.37 inches peak to peak. For longitudinal, 0.76 G's RMS, and for transverse, 0.21 G's RMS. The next is mission and field transportation, which includes transport on rough terrain or off-road conditions, including two-wheeled trailer testing, which has a vertical RMS profile of 4.03 Gs, a peak velocity of 33.3 inches per second, and a displacement of 1.51 inches peak to peak. Duration is 32 minutes per axis per every 51.5 kilometers or every 32 miles. Composite wheeled vehicle profile, which has a vertical RMS of 2.24 Gs, a peak velocity of 28.76 inches per second and a displacement of 1.22 inches peak to peak. Duration is 40 minutes per axis per every 805 kilometers or every 500 miles. Now we will look at aircraft transportation per category 7 through 9. The first is jet aircraft category 7. It is broadband random vibration by nature with peak levels during takeoff. Its duration is typically one minute per takeoff cycle. The next is Propeller Aircraft Category 8. 
it is dominated by high amplitude sinusoidal vibrations at propeller blade passing frequencies and harmonics. Typical aircraft include four bladed and six bladed C-130 vibration spectra provided for testing. The duration is a one hour test per axis which represents 20 hours of flight time. The next is helicopter category 9. It is characterized by superimposed narrow band peaks which encapsulate vibrations from main rotor and tail rotor over wide band random vibrations. Critical frequency considerations include that it's clearly defined rotor blade passage frequencies and drivetrain harmonic vibrations are critical for testing. Duration and compression. This test is aggressively compressed to a duration of 4 hours which represents 2500 hours of actual operation. Now let's look at watercraft per category 10. Vibrations for ship and salt equipment are typically low amplitude and broadband spectrum random vibration. Refer to MIL standard 18H method 528.1 for detailed naval guidelines. The next is railroad transportation per category 11. It is moderately low amplitude broadband vibrations primarily in the vertical axis. Test durations are recommended to be 12 hours test per axis representing 4,800 kilometers or 3,000 miles of transport. Documentation and test integrity, meaning that you should detail all documentation. So document all aspects, including test configurations, packaging changes, orientations tested, and test deviations. Clearly note any assumptions made and rationale behind test choices. Transparency and reproducibility. Clear documentation allows accurate interpretation. The next is benefits of adhering to Annex C. Accurate simulations ensure reliability and operational readiness. They help reduce risk of costly failures and recalls due to vibration shock damage. Key takeaways include that MIL standard 18H method 514.8 Annex C provides vital guidance for simulating real world transportation vibration. It provides accurate test configurations and packaging replication, which are critical for valid results. Always prioritize actual vibration measurements over default profiles when possible. Proper documentation ensures test reproducibility and transparency. And understand transportation modes, including truck, rail, aircraft, and so forth, which improves test tailoring. Avoid resonance through smart isolation and suspension design. Effective testing minimizes risk, ensuring durability, and boosts product reliability. Collaboration and continuous improvement drive long-term testing success. And that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and have a great day.